one point I reached a point where I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, I knew that I was done after only one year. Like, what's up guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm gonna be talking about the reasons why I left New York City. I originally wasn't gonna make this video. I was just gonna talk about it in another video that I have planned, but I have enough reasons and enough stuff I wanna talk about related to why I left New York City that I figured this could be its own video. I wanna tell you a little bit about my story, about why I moved to New York City, what my goals were when I was living there, and what I wanted to get out of living in New York City. So I moved to New York City in February of 2022. And this was after like, probably like six to eight months of looking for a job. I graduated from college in 2019 and I immediately went to Spain for a couple of years to teach English. During the end of my time in Spain, I was looking for a new job, something related to what I studied in my undergrad. So I started applying to magazines and newspapers and online publications, anything to do with like writing and journalism. And for a few months I was doing that. And at that same time I had started making videos on YouTube. So I knew that I really liked making videos and I especially really liked the video editing. But after I got rejected more and more and more, I started to lean more into the video side of things because I realized that's what I really like to do and I figured there was more opportunity in that. So I got back to the United States in like July 2021 and for a good six months I was just applying to jobs every day applying to at least three jobs all over the country and it wasn't until about maybe like November December of that year that I decided that New York City was my best option. There's so many media companies that are based in New York City. I knew that that was where I wanted to be. And it was also because of like everything I had heard about New York City. I knew it was a city that I could walk around in without needing a car because I sold my car when I went to Spain. I knew I could just take the trains to get around and I had always dreamed of living in New York City. So ever since I was a kid, I just, I felt like I saw it on TV all the time and it just seemed so cool, such a cool lifestyle and something that I wanted to experience at least once in my life. And I had thought about other cities before. I thought about LA, Atlanta, Chicago. Those also have really good media industries and a lot of companies there. But I ultimately decided New York City was the best option just because I had always wanted to live there. And I talked to some people who convinced me that that was a good place to be for media. So people who went to my school. So I started applying to jobs in New York City. Um, I applied to many, many different types of jobs, but uh, mostly focusing on video editing. But then I had like a light bulb moment and I realized that what I needed to focus on was applying to production assistant jobs. Once I nailed that down, once I went from writing to video all over the United States to New York City, like I drilled in and I had a focus, that's when I got some results. I got a job with Fox News. Now I wasn't a big fan of Fox News, like I didn't really watch 24 hour news. In my undergrad I avoided like radio and TV studies and I just wanted to focus on writing because I thought that that's what I would end up doing. But uh, it didn't turn out that way. And so yeah, I had my interview and I got offered the job and the pay was $18.75 an hour, which is like ridiculous. Like you can definitely cannot live off that in New York City. But I had saved some money uh, during my time living at home with my parents before I moved to New York City. I was working in a local gym during the daytime as just like a sales representative or like gym manager. And on the weekends, I was working as a waiter at a local restaurant, made pretty good money. So I had enough savings that I could manage the move to New York City. In February of 2022, I moved to New York City from Cleveland, just with a suitcase. I had found an apartment online and I went to the city one time beforehand to check it out, make sure it was you know, good enough and what I expected. So yeah, then I started my, my journey in New York City. So as I mentioned earlier, I had already started my YouTube channel at that time. What I had planned for living in New York City was to do both. I thought I would be able to have a successful career in journalism and work my way up and figure that side of the industry out. And at the same time, be able to make content consistently about New York City and make videos. Yeah, so the year of 2022, I think I made only like seven videos on this channel. And that was just because I was working so much. I ended up working in 24 hour news. So I was literally working around the clock, worked the overnight shift, worked early, early mornings and also late nights, so I was exhausted. I wasn't only working around the clock, but I was also picking up a lot of overtime because I needed the extra money. So I was pretty much working like 50 to 60 hours a week at Fox. And on top of that, I was trying to make videos as well. I was filming and editing, and I did a couple freelance jobs. So basically I was just working all the time and 
like my health really took a toll during that time. Um, I gained weight. I got my first gray hairs. My hairline got a lot worse. It just put a lot of stress on my uh, on my body during that time. I was probably sleeping around like four or five hours a night. I was dating Sophie as well, and we were going out on dates, so I was trying to balance all these things. Having a girlfriend, having a full-time job, working overtime, trying to make content for this channel, and I burnt out really quickly that way. At one point, I reached a point where I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, I knew that I was done after only one year. Like, I just really burnt out at Fox, and I, it's something I wasn't super passionate about. I worked during the midterm elections, so it was a lot of coverage that, you know, I just, like, didn't really care about. I, I feel like news shouldn't be biased um and there was a lot of bias there so once i realized i had enough of fox news and it was time for a change i started looking around and i applied to a fellowship at business insider and it's just a glorified internship but it was 40 hours a week uh nine to five which was like a huge relief coming from working as much as i was working at fox and the hours i was working at fox so i was really happy to get that steady stable nine to five although the pay wasn't great it was twenty dollars an hour which still was not enough to live in new york city and i couldn't do any overtime it was a lot more in line with what i wanted to do in the future or where i wanted my career to go because i decided ultimately like i wasn't going to be a foreign correspondent i wasn't going to be a anchor man like i i had the desire to be in front of the camera but i just hadn't had the training and the way that the corporate structure is set up in a big media organization like fox news is that it's it's really hard to break out and start you know getting even writing but like reporting and doing all the fun stuff. It's really hard to break into if you don't start off in that. And even if you do want to break into that, you're gonna have to move to like some place out in the middle of nowhere and start at the bottom and work your way up to the bigger networks. Even if you're a great production assistant, you're gonna be a production assistant for like two years, then you move up to associate producer and then producer and so on and so forth. And it's just, it's, it's structured. Like you, you can't really climb the ladder any faster because there's people in front of you who have been there longer and you know you can kiss ass and you can show up and do good work but the game's not in your favor i decided i had a better opportunity leaving tv news which i think is going away anyways and going into digital because i had the skill set to do digital i could write i could edit i could animate i could produce that's why i decided to take the internship even though it was it might have technically been like a step backwards in my career to go from a full-time employee to an intern. I don't regret it. I think it was a good decision for my career and I became much better at video editing during that time. And while I felt really proud of the work that I was doing there and I felt like I was surrounded by really smart, talented people every day, $20 an hour in New York City just like was not enough. My apartment cost $1,200 a month. So if you do the math, I was spending 50% of my income on rent, just rent every month. You know, I wasn't the best with my expenses. I was in a long distance relationship. So I spent a lot of money flying to and from Mexico to visit my girlfriend. So during my time working at Insider, I was just eating through my savings, not making enough to get by. That added a lot of stress, even though I wasn't working as much crazy hours uh, and I was able to make some more videos during that time. I was constantly stressed out about money and also because it was an internship and I was hoping to get offered the job at the end of the internship, I was also trying to go above and beyond and produce better and better work and do more. And I ultimately didn't get the job at the end of the internship. Um, so that was a big factor and why I moved out of New York City. And I realized while I was making videos about my life in New York City and trying to manage a career at the same time that I wasn't doing either one effectively. As much as I wanted to live in New York City and I had always dreamed about living there, I just don't think I was as passionate about it as some others are. New York City is not a perfect city. There's a, there's a lot wrong with it and I think it's just uh, overly romanticized because it would be great to live there if you were rich, but me, I was struggling and just the, the hustle work culture consumed me. And like, I hate to be one of those people who gets chewed up and spit out by New York City, but I mean, that was me. And honestly, I was kind of ashamed about that for a while, but I think it's more telling of the state of the city rather than saying anything about me. I mean, I've seen a lot of people who went to New York City and thrived and made great lives for themselves, but I wasn't able to do it. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a bad life. I, you know, 
I had connections there, but ultimately I, I never really found a sense of community. I didn't have much of a social circle. My social circle was pretty much my roommate and my girlfriend were really the only people in my corner in New York City. That was another big reason why I moved out. The loneliness that you can feel in New York City definitely is real. And I sort of avoided that loneliness by being a workaholic and working too much. But I do think some of my relationships and my health suffered because of that. When I didn't have a job, when my lease came to an end, instead of looking for another job and trying to find an apartment and make it work and find roommates, I just decided like I wasn't, I wasn't gonna do all that because I was paying 50% of my income a month for an apartment with a leaky ceiling that leaked onto my bed with rats, with roaches. And there's just so much better out there for so much cheaper in other places. And now that we can work remote, if you're in that sort of industry where you are able to work remote, I think Van Neistat said that everybody should live in New York City once in their life. I think every American should live in New York City for one year, like the draft. I feel like I got that from my time in New York City. I worked hard. I... Uh, struggled and I also saw a lot of the great parts of New York City. I got to experience some great amazing things that I never experienced before and ultimately like, I don't have anything against the city. I would love to go back and visit again and if one day I can afford it I would live there again but just like scraping to get by living with roommates and always feeling insecure just it's, it's it doesn't feel worth it to me. So I didn't make this video to discourage anyone from moving to New York City. That's not the point of this. I kind of just wanted to talk to the people who maybe are living in New York City and struggling and considering moving out and let them know that like, it's okay. It's, it's no big deal. If you don't feel like the city is serving you or helping you grow, or if you got what you needed out of New York City, it's okay to move out. You're not a failure. That's how I felt at first, but I realized like now that I'm out of the city that that was a stage in my life that I'm, I'm happy to have lived, but there's so much more out there. There's so much better waiting for me. So I'm glad that I finally moved out of there and I don't have that financial burden as well as the mental and physical burden of living in New York City. Happy to now focus more on my health and take care of myself and not feel the need to always overwork myself and get nothing in return for it. So that was my little rant about New York City, my story of living there. Um, hopefully it made sense and it wasn't too rambly, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you lived in New York City, if you live there now, what was your experience like? Thanks so much for watching. I know this is a little bit different from my normal type of video. This is more just like a sit down and talk type of video. I usually do like heavily scripted videos with a lot of editing, but uh, I wanted to do something more chill and laid back. You know, I do really appreciate every one of you who shows up and watches every video. You guys keep me going, so not to be too cheesy, but thank you so much. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And until the next one, give travel. That's my catchphrase. I'm sticking to it, even though the name of the channel is not Darvia Har. It's my name. We're giving travel. Peace.